Hey guys, Ben Paints here and today we are back once again for another video. However, this time we are not at Team Sport, we are instead at PFI or Paul Fletcher International Circuit. And here as we jump straight in, we are in fact participating in the final round of the Club 73 Weekend Series, which I was really excited to try out, really wanted to get involved with and I hope you guys are ready for the video too so just as we line up to get onto the grid I just want to say if you are new here or you haven't already could you please hit the subscribe button down below as it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it and if you enjoy this video feel free to hit the like button as well as it really does help me and it benefits me and motivates me to just make more videos in general but we are underway straight away here in the background and we get an excellent start. We jumped two people right off the bat and you could see that the conditions were very wet. They were very damp and this is my first time racing in the wet. Now, I did come up here with Matthew Borrodale. I'll leave a link to his video down below in the description. I know that he did a video around this event so I'll leave that down in the description. But we got off to a really good start, gained a few positions up into 14th place and there's a driver up ahead that spun round and unfortunately, boom, we just decided to go into the side of him. As I said, the conditions were very wet, very damp, and there was just no way I could have avoided that. I tried turning the wheel, but unfortunately, I just had one direction that I was going in, that was straight into the side of the person that spun round. So I would like to apologize to that person if they do see this video. I didn't mean to completely T-bone you, but it was just the way it was. And we move on and we were able on the, the back straight to actually gain a position up into 13th place. So obviously starting in 16th position, we've already been able to gain three places. Now, here you see I do go very wide and I'm trying to take the wet line on the track. And obviously this was a track that was very new to me. I did actually spin out in much head up personnel on the right. I did spin out on my practice laps. So I was just determined to just get my head down just try and push on as much as I can, just try and take things steady and just ensure that I don't spin out, which obviously is a lot easier said than done in these conditions. Obviously rental carts only offer slick tires in the wet, so even though you might think you have a little bit more grip than you do, you really don't, and as you can see there, the amount of understeer on the carts was absolutely unreal, not something that I was used to at all. And these curves on the left as well really sending shockwaves through me. They were really uncomfortable to drive over, but as you'll see throughout the rest of the session, I seem to just be completely attracted to them. But we do come across the line there. Our first lap, a 1 minute 53.2 second lap. Now, these lap times are rounded to what it says on the timer in the top right, as I wasn't entirely sure what my exact lap times were, but you sort of get the gist as to what my rough times were so my goal here was just to try and catch up to some of the drivers up ahead obviously I lost a bit of momentum from going into the side of the other driver on the first lap so I was just trying to catch up just trying to stay focused and really get my head down and try and drive as much as I possibly could and here you can see we hit the brakes but the car just doesn't want to stop and we do end up going straight into the wall and luckily we actually managed to bounce off completely so it was almost like a NASCAR wall ride and it, I actually managed to gain a lot of time on some of the drivers ahead so I wasn't too disappointed with this but almost collecting the driver up ahead I hit the brakes and for some reason they were just completely unresponsive and this led to me just sliding almost straight into the back of the driver ahead you see at least four or five cars in a small little group up ahead Matthew there about three carts ahead of us so we were really just trying to get in and amongst the action that was going on ahead of us. We didn't want to just be in no man's land and have a bit of a boring race on this corner. Just taking it a little bit slowly just so I can try and get as good an exit as I can. Obviously the slower you go into a corner, the faster you can come out. And that's proved right on that corner there. I went really slowly and I was able to really maximise my exit. And this actually leads to me gaining a position up into P11. So I actually managed to gain a lot of time around that last sector. And then this meant that I was able to catch up some of the other guys up ahead. So our last lap then, a 143.830, so a lot faster than our first lap, which I was extremely happy with. And now we're just trying to focus on some of the other guys ahead. Obviously, you can see Matt there up ahead and some of the other drivers. So I was really just trying to keep up with him and just trying to show my prowess on track rather than just languishing back near, near the back of the field. So 
this was one of the corners that was really my kryptonite in this session. I really couldn't find the line or rip through it, no matter what sort of angle I went at the corner, I just wasn't able to understand which was the correct line to use. So, however, on that lap though, we did actually manage to get around it decently enough. So, here taking a nice wide line, much as I mentioned earlier, the wet line, just to try and get as good an exit onto the straight as I possibly can. Obviously losing a little bit of time there, going a little bit sideways through the corner, and when you go sideways, it really does mean that you lose a lot of momentum. So there you can see a little bit cleaner there, and unfortunately still not getting the exact run that I wanted out of the corner. So Matthew up ahead of us there, just sort of pulling away. And here I was really just trying to get through each of these corners as, as smoothly as I possibly could, but as you can see, I was wrestling a lot with a lot of understeer, and I was really struggling to actually find the grip on the track. Again, here you can see how much I'm turning the wheel to the right and actually running very wide there onto sort of the astroturfy type of environment on the outside of the track there. And once again, there's four carts up ahead of us. I was trying to take a nice narrow line here just to try and tuck in as much as I could to then get an exit onto the onto the straight, the main straight, the start finish straight. But unfortunately, I just didn't get the correct line and got into a bit of a damp patch and that led to me going into a little bit of a slide. But we do come across the line now of our fastest lap so far. 142.050 so really decent times at the moment setting a decent benchmark for myself and actually managing to get a superb run through the first couple of corners through the little complex section there as we go under the bridge and really taking a wide line and actually gaining a lot of momentum on the couple of guys ahead of us here so really closing up a lot i'm really feeling quite happy and confident that we can do a decent move here and actually almost going into the back of matt there and I didn't really want to crash into Matt because I knew that he was fighting for a top three in his category. So I didn't want to collect him. And I was actually just about managed to avoid him there, which I was very happy with. I think he would have been very angry if I did take him out there. So I was luckily able just to hit the brakes right at the, at the last minute there. And I was able to avoid a big collision with him. But once again, just really closing up to the group of guys ahead. Really happy with my pace so far. I thought going into this race, obviously I haven't had a race in the wet before. I've done a few sessions in the damp, but not as wet as this. And I just really wanted to not be near the back, if that makes sense. So I just really wanted to just be a little bit competitive. And you can see I really am here. Matt looking over his shoulder, looking a little bit nervous here. And I was really just trying to follow him through. He looks like he takes a really good run through that corner, but goes a bit wide and then goes to a narrow line. I try and follow him through here, but the driver ahead comes across. I hit the brakes and... Round we go, our first spin of the day. Obviously, I wasn't too happy with this, but I thought I'd dust myself off. I thought it was bound to happen at some point in this race, as I did have quite decent pace, and I thought I was pushing a little bit too hard, but after that happened, I think this is where it started to get worse and worse, because I just kept trying to make up for lost time, try and catch back up to the guys ahead of us. You can see there, because of that spin, we did have a 1 minute 47.440 lap, which obviously was about five seconds slower than our fastest lap so far and like i mentioned where i was just trying to push to catch up to the other guys this did lead to a little bit of carnage for me later in the session but we do move on here just trying to take some decent lines decent enough lines just so i can gain as much time as i can on the guys ahead and just as i mentioned earlier just really getting this corner wrong all over the outside curbing on that corner and just really getting a little bit frustrated with myself and my visor was starting to fog up as well, I was finding it difficult to see, but we do come into this corner here and just trying to take a nice wide line, but unfortunately again, we go around for a second time. So here we did actually lose a position, so from 11th back down into 12th place, I was really frustrated with myself here as I've literally made two spins in the space of half a lap, so this really did anger me a little bit and I was really just trying to push now and catch up to the driver that had overtaken me for 11th position. You can see me a little bit frustrated there banging the wheel and here you can see the driver up ahead going a little bit wide and I was really just trying to capitalise on this as much as I can, taking a little bit of a better wet line and able to get a lot of momentum coming out of the chicane there. My goal here at this point was just to try and keep looking forward and not really reflect on the bad things that had happened in this race so far, obviously two spins. I was really looking just to try and consolidate the 11th position. I knew that there was a big gaggle of cars up ahead that had sort of got away, but we come round this corner once again, and there just was a bit too much accelerator use. So once again, we spin for our third time in one lap, and I was really, really frustrated at myself at this point. My head sort of lost itself, and 
I was really just trying to catch up to the driver ahead. Now we do skip forward a little bit here, later into the same lap, and you can see how wide we're going on this corner, really not managing to get out on right, and still down in 12th position behind the driver in the white helmet with the orange trimmer, really closing up behind them here, really getting a good exit, trying to take the outside line around the left-hand corner, really pulling it off quite well. He's trying to stick to the inside there, but unfortunately getting a little bit of a tank slapper on the exit of the corner and this leads to the driver to then overtake me as we go across the start finish line with our fastest lap so far 141.640 which I was quite happy with my pace was reasonable at this point it wasn't good by any means but I was doing all right in the wet and I was quite happy with just trying to stay consistent rather than spinning as I already had three times in this race so at this point I thought it was going to be a nice little battle with this driver ahead you see really just trying to get a little bit of a switch back going and once again on this corner just trying to cut back on the driver ahead but luckily for him he does get a good enough run out of the corner to stay ahead of me and there wasn't a lot of slipstream here I was trying to lower my wind resistance by going up behind him but I didn't seem to gain a lot of time and here once again as I as you saw earlier in the race I did manage to go really wide and just the brakes sort of failed on me there so I was almost pumping at the brakes at this point at that corner at the first half and just because I had lost my confidence a little bit you could see how wide I go here and get a really good wet line and it actually leads to me forcing the overtake on the driver ahead now we skip ahead once again as I didn't want to bore you with me just driving around on my own but we do make our way under the tunnel section once again and taking the same line as I have throughout the whole race and here just really trying to go wide and just try and maximize that corner I was looking backwards to see where the driver was that I'd overtaken but he was back quite a bit so I was quite happy I was quite comfortable until we get to my bogey corner once again we go round for the fourth time in this race so really annoyed at myself now and just waiting here for the three drivers behind me to go past because I didn't really want to get in their way and cause an accident so I just thought it was safer just to let all three of them pass and then carry on behind them obviously trying to catch them and chase them down because at this point you can see the track is beginning to dry out so this is why I was getting increasingly annoyed at myself because there wasn't a wet, uh, wet line disappearing or a dry line emerging sorry but there just seemed to be a lot of sun out and it was a really nice day and it was really letting myself down by spinning so much but again you can see just trying to take a little bit more of a wider line obviously not getting the best exit but getting a better exit over the person ahead of me and once again just really closing up through the chicane section really getting a decent run and really closing up behind the driver ahead of me so at this point I just really wanted to get my head down once again and just try and get some decent places back as I knew at this point I was actually a bit further back than I wanted to be obviously 16 people on track and I was in 14th position so I wasn't too happy with where I was on the track at this point in time and I really wanted to just improve on that and just really knuckle down and try and get a decent finish so here you can see coming through the fast uh, the fast the final section of the lap there we did manage to make an overtake up into P13 so this is where we remain for the next couple of laps as we go across the line our last lap being a 1 minute 40.350 and really just trying to close in on the driver ahead of us so this is a driver that we'd overtaken already today so we're looking to overtake them again in this race and getting a really decent line there through the first main corner of the track just really closing up behind the driver ahead and just going a little bit wide here and trying to take a little bit of a wet line through this corner but unfortunately as I mentioned before just getting that corner wrong as I had done all day and this meant that I lost a lot of momentum on the driver ahead so losing a little bit of time now I was hoping to make it up through the first hairpin as you can see there my foot pumping the brakes I mentioned I, I really lost all confidence going into that corner compared to what I did at the beginning of the race and as we look ahead to my surprise the driver does actually completely miss the track and it leaves them just swerving off the track and just spinning so another position gain there just sort of handed to me so I was really happy with that up into 12th position once more and I was looking ahead to try and catch up to the person in 11th place as that's where I've been for a majority of the race probably about half the race around 11th place so I really wanted to just get that position back and really proved myself that I had what it takes to sort of battle with some of the guys that compete in Club 73. Obviously, this championship is sorted into four different categories. You have Clubman, Clubman Plus, 
Pro and Super Pro. I was put into the Clubman Plus category, so this is more people that are a little bit heavier, they have a little bit of experience, but not a lot. And I was really just trying to force myself into having a decent time in this category. We come across the line at 1 minute 40.6. We move forward once again. Our last lap there, 1 minute 39.710. So really just as I mentioned before just trying to take the exact same line as I had throughout the rest of the race losing the back end and once again we're off into the grass having a nice little picnic and that is officially our fifth time off on this race so I was really annoyed now at this point this really got under my skin because I was completely unopposed just trying to push a bit too hard and just trying to take the same line as I had for every other lap but unfortunately it just went wrong and I don't know why and this actually led to the race leader overtaking me here now I didn't realize this at the time I thought this was just one of the other drivers that was tucked up behind in 15th or 16th but this was actually the person in first place so I was just trying to keep up with them follow their lines obviously making a complete meal of it through the first hairpin there but really just trying to tag along behind them and follow them I was hoping to overtake or re-overtake as, as I mentioned I did think it was someone that was behind me so I was a little bit upset that someone else would overtake me but to my surprise I didn't realize there was a person in first so they do begin to race off into the distance you can see how smooth they are I don't know if they were using a uh, smooth application of the pedals or steering angle but they were just a lot better than I was around this track in the wet I was really struggling you can see once again a lot of understeering at least to be going on to the Astro turf on that corner so I was just really trying to tag along behind you can see already after about half to three quarters of a lap they have completely raced away and I was a little bit annoyed with this because as I mentioned I did think it was someone behind me so I thought I was another position lost. I didn't realise this until after the race had finished so I wasn't too disheartened but we do come across the line there with that spin a 148.4 and I do believe that this was in fact the final lap of the race. I knew, knew that this was the case because there was about one to one and a half minutes left on the digiboard that was prevalent on the start finish straight so I was really just trying to get my lap time down as much as I possibly could just really do myself proud and just try and be as fast as I possibly could obviously the race leader up ahead of me and I was just trying to follow their lines but you can see they're pretty much a speck in the distance already so there was no chance of that happening but once again coming down into the hairpin you can see trying to be a lot smoother on the brakes I wasn't actually pumping the brakes this time it was not quite smooth enough on the accelerator on the exit and that did lead to the back back end of the car sliding out and losing a bit, of, a bit of momentum there but once again just trying to take a nice wide line obviously the track's still not very dry into the second half we got a little bit wide onto the rumble curbs and it really did cause your internal organs to be shook around all inside you it wasn't a pleasant feeling going over those curbs but we didn't seem to find any other way through the corners other than to use them so once again just trying to take a decent line through the last few corners here just going a little bit slower into this corner this time and actually managed to keep it on the track for once rather than going really wide again just going quite slow here just to maximize my exit coming into the last couple of corners staying as tight as I possibly dared without spinning out to that corner and then having a decent run onto the final straight to see the checker flag race on the left hand side we do come across the line here with our fastest lap of the race a 1 minute 39.210 so very happy with how I ended the race and very happy with my final time and my position I could have been a bit better if I didn't have five to a million spins who knows where I would have finished the race but as you know racing's racing at the end of the day what happens is what happens so we didn't have to deal with staying in 12th position but I really enjoyed the experience PFI was an absolutely incredible track and I would just like to say thank you very much to Clinton who runs the whole event I really had a great time and I'm really looking forward to maybe doing a few more in the future however this does bring us to the end of the video so I would like to say if you have watched this far and we are just going to have a nice in lap here if you have watched this far and you do enjoy the video please could you hit the like button as it really does mean the world to me and if you could also hit the subscribe button if you are new or if you've been watching a few videos and you haven't subscribed yet then why haven't you I'm, I bring you as many videos as I can I put my heart and soul into these videos I really enjoy making them and I try and bring them out weekly too so we're just coming around here for the end of the race but 
I would like to say a big shout out once again to Matthew Bardell whose video I'll leave down below in the description. He finished in sixth position in the end and he was really fighting for a top three in his category in the championship but unfortunately I do believe that he missed out by only five points. So if you do want to head over to his channel and watch his footage I'll leave the link down below. Alongside this I'll also leave another link to the karting slash team sport discord that's been created there's a lot of us in there now i believe there's around 65 and everyone just enjoys having a good chat and getting on with each other and giving each other tips and just having a great time so i'll leave a link to that as well i do have another event coming up this week which i'm excited to bring to you guys so i'll keep you updated down below in the description for my instagram so if you want to keep up to date with that then go and follow me over there as always i'll catch you guys in the next one Take care.